but I'm getting to that age where I, <laughs> I there's some stuff that happens where I just feel some stuff needs to be said, all right? And I want y'all's thoughts on this because I don't think there is a clear answer on this. I don't think the best way to just, I think we as a society have to do a better job at like taking a very careful look at our own, our lifestyles and how they're actually translating into our health. So like I said, a little bit of a segue to segue. For example, if I am struggling with health issues, a lot of them are going to be chronic and are going to need to be medicated. But I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like a lot of people would benefit from taking a look at their lifestyle instead of medicating. And the reason why I bring that up, even though the doctor literally gave my sister-in-law the lifestyle medicine is, uh, advice, is I think to give my thought process that to give that sort of lifestyle advice, you have to build up some form of trust or at least communicate it in a productive way. Because I also think that there's a lot of people out there, I'm not gonna name any names, a lot of very famous people out there that get really big off of telling people to grow up, stop being a, stop being a, stop being a sissy, just stop being you know a fatty fatkins and do this and that and stop being a lazy, you know, worthless piece of crap. And, and that's terrible, right? That's just terrible. That doesn't help almost anybody and alienates people that are trying to better themselves. So I'm not saying anything necessarily hot take here. All right? Everything I've said is pretty safe. Now this is what might get hot takes, okay? And I'm happy to educate myself on where I'm wrong here, but I, I, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna sp say my piece from my experience because a lot of you guys know that I've worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in the Overwatch community. And most of you guys know, but may not be familiar with the extent with which I have worked with children, um, teenagers and children as young as three and four years old. And I have worked with thousands of them. That's what I did for almost a, actually over a decade. I was a math tutor, a gymnastics instructor, and a mixed martial art instructor. And I got to work with kids one-on-one. -on -one. I got to work with kids in school programs. Um, I worked with thousands of children. And I also would help tutor kids with reading. I grew up with my dad being an actual reading tutor as well. And what I saw is I saw a lot of what I would call maybe not even early diagnosis, but overly diagnosis. Um, let's start with one of these, okay? So I worked with a lot of kids in MMA and in my and teaching with a lot of my teaching, and my dad did as well with something called dyslexia. And one of the dyslexia things was that this is really hot back in the two thousands was that you couldn't read letters correctly. Um, that the things would get scrambled essentially. And there were some cases of kids I knew or knew of that would even have a, like they would write things or see things almost backwards. They, they, their, their, their brain was scrambled um, and they, they struggled a lot, okay? Um, but let me tell you also what I saw. I also saw at least half a dozen kids. Um, I would go as far to say the majority of kids who I was informed by their parents who had dyslexia when I was teaching with them or tutoring them who did not have dyslexia, they had a different disorder, which I coined a name called Okay. And let me kind of explain to you what this is. In America, I don't know what it's like in places outside of America, phonics was very popular for a long period of time. And what phonics was, was essentially, this is the letter, this is the sound it makes. This is the letter, this is the sound it makes. This is the letter, and this is the sound it makes, right? P-A-S, pass, right? 
And it's a very slow and methodical way of learning the letter. And then as you get better, you start to be able to sound out and read almost anything. Now, what got popular over time as I was getting, I even it was spent some time as a substitute teacher as well, is people would learn, guys, this word right here is pass. Pa this is what this is what the the word pass looks like. Okay, so what would happen is kids would memorize that this is the word pass, and so then they wouldn't necessarily break down the components of what each of those letters did necessarily, and so where the dyslexia sometimes kicked in. is this kids would read words incorrectly because they didn't know how to break down each individual letter and what would happen is i'm trying to think of a good example here um is you'd have words like this um And a kid with dyslexia would read them all the same. And what happened is I had so many kids uh, that I worked with that were described as dyslexic, but actually they had just done sight words. They didn't actually know phonics. They didn't understand the letters sounds well enough, nor did they understand the process of going down each word. I would literally sit with kids. My dad did this for years. I remember him. And he would sit down with a kid who is dyslexic. And he would say, read this word, okay? Uh, li 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 lively. No, read it for me. Li lively. Well, no, 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 no. Sound it out. Just do one letter at a time. L and they wouldn't be able to do it. They wouldn't be able to do it. They literally would not be able to go down the list and read out the letters. And I guess my point here is I don't want to sit here and talk about dyslexia too much because it is a real problem, I believe, for many people. But my point was that I knew a lot of kids where it was immediately diagnosed and then we didn't really look at why. Wait, are we sure? Like... Is there something that we could be doing or is there or is our approach is this is there something wrong with the lifestyle is there something wrong with the way we're teaching this or the way that we're structuring this it immediately shifts to this is the problem and that's it right and it doesn't stop there and i saw somebody in chat bring it up and this one is a real humdinger okay because this is another one that is a legitimately a problem but it is not only misdiagnosed because because my problem chat is not that there isn't a problem there is a problem but we're not talking about the right ways of fixing it for every person it's a very broad solution and it makes me so angry because this is our next topic here and it's this one adhd and i remember when this kicked in i was still a kid myself back in the late uh, 1990s it got to be very popular in the 2000s. I remember hearing every kid at ADHD, every, all the kids at ADHD. And I have worked with hundreds of kids with ADHD. And here's what we, I have learned from kids with ADHD, okay? Kids with ADHD have a lot of factors in common, okay? Kids with ADHD, I'm not going to even write them up, okay? They often have parents that aren't involved with them well enough. Most kids that I talk with ADHD, cart or the horse here, right? Which one causes which? Didn't have parents that were very involved or had troubled family lives. Basically, it's had didn't get enough attention. Um, the second thing with most ADHD kids is that they were universally in public school systems that did not allow for much physical activity. The other thing with ADHD kids that I learned 
is that they were not very well disciplined. So there was a lack of love and attention. There was usually a lack of discipline. They also struggled with the public. They were almost always involved in some ways short with, with a public school system. I don't want to paint with a broad brush here that did not allow enough exercise or, 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 or movement. Um, there were a lot of, there was a big ruckus with where I lived uh, where they would cut, they cut down the, the, the recess hours to half. Um, okay. Uh, and then another one as well is they were disproportionately, this was a big one that I'm going to be honest. I don't know the full science in this. I can only tell you what a little bit I know, a little bit I know is that disproportionately the kids that had ADHD had significantly worse diets than the kids without ADHD. And my problem here is what we had is we had two categories. We had the misdiagnosed and we had the poorly treated, the people that were, did have ADHD, but were not given the space, uh, not given the, uh, the, uh, the, the creative expression to be able to do the things that they needed to do that were not, and were not treated properly, not given the affection, not disciplined when they needed to be disciplined because a lot of ADHD is being about, be able to control when you need to control. And then we also had kids that were just normal kids, just normal children that were being asked and fed and forced to do things that were not natural or healthy for them. And so then immediately what we do is we smack down a diagnosis. And this is what frustrates me so much is it's not that it's, you know, these kids, these society kids just aren't focused nowadays. No, it's what did the kids actually need to either be able to work through their disability or to show that they don't even have a disability at all and that they are we are forcing them to do things that are not normal for example here's here's something really important if any of you guys have paid attention to my coaching sessions you'll know this it is not normal to be able to concentrate or focus with full effort all day long it doesn't happen it's not physically possible to do that and what are children 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 expected to do you see what i'm saying and if you can't then there's something wrong with you and that just makes me so angry whether you legitimately have a disability whether you legitimately have adhd or you have a misdiagnosis and then this is where i'm going to say the spiciest thing i might say today my real, real anger. Now, I am not going to paint this with a broad brush. I'm not going to make the same mistake that I'm accusing other people of making. But the real problem is when you don't consider lifestyle factors and when you don't consider uh, 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 diet, when we don't put those as the number one priority. Now, I get it. If you're if you're a, a child psychologist or a teacher, there's limited options with what you can do, right? But as parents and as communities and, and even as doctors, I swear, medication has to be the last resort, especially when we're talking about medication like Ritalin. You have to be so careful when you're diagnosing something like that. I saw many children, whether they legitimately had ADHD or not, just completely just bzz. now i'm sure that medication has helped a lot of people and it does help a lot of people but i think it is the equivalent of maybe this is a hot take but it's almost like chemotherapy where you have to be really careful and really sure um because it gets abused yes it gets abused my dad taught in a public high school and they were selling ritalin everywhere in the high school um, and even when it's not, I saw many young children who went from being overly excited, um, just either not to parents didn't pay enough attention to them. I knew, I knew these kids. I work with them every single week, multiple times a week, three or four times a week. And then they go, they get immediately medicated is a problem. And then they're just zombies. Um, and again, guys, I, I'm just not educated enough on medication or ADHD to give blanket statements, but I have worked with so many children, thousands of children, and, and I'm just concerned. I'm just a little bit concerned. And I think when we have, like, the, it has to be, we have to, like, look at this holistically, I feel like. 
Um, Exactly, Varashi. Exactly, Varashi. Guys can, guys, can you imagine doing... Oh, like, I just... I just... I don't know. It, it really bothers me. It really bothers me. So, I know that there are people that have received medication who have needed the medication and benefited from it. Now, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep going. Because... There's one other, I wouldn't even paint it, I will not paint it with a broad brush because you can't even define it. There's one other, and this is something that I've been exposed to recently, more so than I ever have been at any other point in my life. And again, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people like this. And now we're not talking about ADHD, we're talking about broader mental health as a whole. And again, I don't want to say depression or anxiety. Uh, I want to go a lot broader than that. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this. My problem with mental health right now, if I could even say that, is that you have a lot of struggling people right now in a society that is dopamine numb, addicted to social media, has some of the struggles immense, at least in my country, struggles immensely with quality of diet and nutrition, struggles with exercise, has lost social connection, and once again, our jump point is to immediately diagnose as a disability and then medicate. And I'm going to tell, be honest with you guys, there are people that need and will benefit from medication. I don't know enough about it. I will never know enough about it. But I have been put in a position to work with hundreds of these people and to offer them and work with them through holistic, not just through my stream coaching either, but to work with them through exercise, building meaningful relationships, building skills, sleep, nutrition, exercise. And it just bothers me to see that we don't at least attempt to exhaust some of these more options or prioritize these options. And we are kidding ourselves if we think that the mental health epidemic right now isn't anything but a combination of actively normalizing mental health being an issue, which is a good thing, because we don't want people that struggle with these issues to be ostracized. They should feel, I don't have to be embarrassed for struggling with things, right? Where that's been an issue in the past, right? It's okay. That's good. The bad is that we live in a world where you are put under so much tremendous stress with the amount of consumption of social media. And I mean, I've, I've said these things already, right? And that it is, this is why this is the problem. So, this isn't, again, a, not a society moment for me. This isn't about that. My problem is a legitimate concern about actually fixing these root issues. If you're not going outside and you are not moving and you're eating garbage and you're spending too much time on TikTok and Discord and scrolling through Reddit and you're not building meaningful person-to-person -person in real life personal relationships, you are going to be an unhappy person. You, do, you may or may not have a mental illness. Your mental illness may exacerbate those issues. Okay? A lot of people struggle with social relationships. A lot of people struggle with exercise because of mental issues, right? Cart and horse, right? If you're, let's say, mildly autistic and you feel uncomfortable in social situations, you will therefore avoid social situations, which makes it difficult, right? It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle. It's hard to break. But 
That's not the case for everybody. And even for the, when they, it is the case for some people, when somebody is depressed and doesn't want to get stuff done, this, the way to, we don't break the cycle by saying that's okay. We say, you know what, the, you know, here, here's, here's what it is in a nutshell, guys. There is a countercultural movement or a movement where we accept everybody regardless of what they do. And we don't care about how they are as a person or how they're taking care of themselves as a person or whether they are growing and learning and improving themselves as a person and taking care of themselves as a person. And then there's a counterculture movement where you're a worthless piece of scum. You're a wor If you are overweight or you struggle with mental health or, or, or you are worthless and you're not worth the time and you should be bullied until you fix yourself. And that is evil and wrong. But, but but the other one isn't that, that that one's not helping us either. You as a person, listen. You as a person are uh, 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 you are legitimate. You are unique, and you are worth something. And you should have people that love you unconditionally. Aff affection and care and love should be unconditional. But. Because that love is unconditional, because that because you care about somebody, you want them to take care of yourself. You see, when I'm thinking about mental health and my concern for mental health, it's not dang libs. It's not that. It's not. It's because I care about you. I want you to do something that will make you happier. And to, uh, you need to take. You deserve to take care of yourself. And that's why this 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 really, guys, this really hits close, man. Like. Like so many people, like I just, like I, I work with so many kids, guys, and like, and they just, and 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 and, the, oh man, I I we just have we just have to know what to prioritize, guys. We just we can't. Not everybody's the same, and that's why I think knowing the person, really caring about the person, is so important because you don't really know what what their shortcoming is, and you can't know, guys, until you know them. You can't know. And so that's why I was going back to my sister-in-law's thing with the, the the doctor. She didn't know what what my sister what my sister needed because she didn't know my sister-in-law. And to me, it's like like we have to do better, guys. We have to do better than this. And and here's my concern, guys. And this is maybe one of the hotter takes, but I think it needs to be said. I'm a little concerned with the the community that I'm in right now, which is the gaming community, because I think there's a lot of people that treat their mental illness as a personality trait and as something to be proud of and to, to flaunt. Um, and that sounds backwards, but you all know what I'm talking about. And here's what I want. I don't want anybody to be ashamed of a disability, whether it is physiological or whether it's from a lifestyle choice there should not be there should not that they are not should not be valued less as a person but that is not something to to celebrate as a positive trait when it's actively making you miserable and will send you to the grave sooner i am if if you are making poor lifestyle choices and, and hurt and exacerbating your anxiety and your depression because of the lifestyle choices that you're making, I am not going to celebrate that. That does not make me happy. That is, that is sycophantic and it is wrong. I will support you and help you regardless of what choices that you make or what regardless, but I don't celebrate it. I just can't, that just seems deviance it just it's wrong and i think at least in, in this the 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 community that i'm in right now there's too much celebration of things that should not be hidden that should not be taunted or made fun of or humiliated but gone as like we need to find ways of working around that we don't pretend they're not there we don't taunt them we don't humiliate people for struggling with them or if it may, some people, maybe it, it just isn't out. Maybe there is a chemical imbalance in the brain that will never be fixed. And, and to me, you love and care for somebody when you want to take care of them and you want to help them. 
And that's, that's the difference. That's the difference right there. And you can, and I, and I hope that you guys don't take away from this that I have anything but care and love for people for, because I have been depressed. I know what it's like. I've been extremely stressed. I know what it's like, right? And I have worked with many close friends, many close friends who have dealt with issues like that. And I've worked with disabled people and I've worked with autistic people and anxious and stress. And we should celebrate our differences because nobody's exactly the same, but we should all be trying, striving to better ourselves, not just for our own personal happiness so that we can also help other people as well. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm just concerned about society today. I'm going to say the Joker word <laughs> because a lot of what we do, um, I would, what's the term? It glamorizes mental illness to where it's something that we are, it's almost like it is who we are, is our mental illness. Um, and also we have such a society that just so relentlessly hammers at the worst things that you can be doing. Romanticize, yeah. Whether that's, you know, social media or diet or exercise or things like that. So I don't know what the solution is, guys. I don't know what the solution is, guys. I don't know what the society, I'm not smart enough to know this, but here's what I will say. Please care for people. Please be kind to people. Please treat people respectfully, always, with no exception. But, as the motorcycle goes zooming by, but support people like, here's the thing, guys. You should be, you should, when, when you're trying to help somebody, the only way that you can help somebody really truly get better is by having their trust and, and them having confidence that you really care about them, right? And so when you go up to somebody and say, you're anxious, you're depressed because you're a lazy, fat bum, it doesn't work because you don't care about the person. And that's why you have to care about a person first for to actually help them. But don't be the guy. Don't be the person that just completely ignores all the poor life choices that you or somebody else is making about somebody you really care about. It doesn't mean go up in their face and, and bail them out and tell, okay, this is what you need to be doing better. But we should strive to be better. We should strive. There isn't a large scale solution to the problem. No, that's true. It's a lot, it's a lot more in depth than that. I think a great example for me is my grandmother, my, my, my dad's mother. She, we, uh, I grew up, my, my, his heritage is in Florida. Um, and she grew up in an orange grove. Uh, her great grandfather was a World War II veteran, saw a lot of really ugly things, probably struggled a lot with PTSD. Um, he didn't talk about his experiences in World War II for almost 40 years. Um, and he came back from the war, and I know my grandmother had a really weird home life. Um, my grandfather did as well. My dad's father as well. Grew up in a very abusive home. Um, a lot of my grandmother's family are avid drinkers, smokers, spent a lot of time in and out of jail. Um, a lot of poor life choices. But she broke She broke the mold. She broke the trend. Um and I have a lot of respect for her for doing that because I know that's very hard to do. Um, so I guess, you know, celebrate the people in your life, even if it's yourself who have been able to kind of go through unfortunate circumstances, who've been able to break the cycle, you know, because uh, it's easier said than done, right? And, and try and lead by example. I think that, that's where that's where we start. Um, lead by example. Lead by example. Lead by example, guys. Be kind, be supportive, do the best that you can. Like are you guys, you guys have seen so many of my vod reviews where we talk about little, little adjustments here, little atomic habits here. You know, do just do a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I just would hate to use my platform. This is why, like, I. I have such a love hate with this job because I get to work with so many people that have so many issues, you know? Um, and it's because 
of what I'm doing, video games. Unfortunately, people that spend a lot of time with video games often struggle with this kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm not saying here to guys to put me out of a job, but if you're going to be involved in Overwatch, you need to be considering your overall health and how you're approaching the game as a whole. I mean, trust me, I know it myself. The most depressed days I ever have are when I'm constantly refreshing Discord, checking messages, and, and I, I just feel horrible. Um, so it's like, you just, I don't know. I feel like I have some insight here because I, I have such a big back. I'm not a psychologist, guys. I don't know enough about this stuff, but I have worked with people for so long of all different ages, of all different backgrounds. And I understand at least to an extent of like the pitfalls, right? And it just makes me so sad when, when I see somebody who I know is making really poor life choices. In fact, Pepper recently has been been chatting with, with an old student of hers who's been making some really questionable life choices. And now she's struggled with anxiety. Now she's struggled with depression. She's she's in this cycle. And honestly, sometimes I just want to you just shake her and go, do something, touch grass. Just you were so much happier when you're actually doing things, you know? And it's, but you, you know, it's hard, guys. It's hard. Like we have to, have to break the cycle somehow. I mean, really, guys, touch grass. Like, it, 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 we're just not, I just don't think human beings are, are, are made for this, you know? Like, we're just, like, we're, we're in a, almost like in a society that's out of all us, you know? It's like, like, we're not, we're not equipped for this, you know? People are inherently lazy, right? So that's why you have to make what what adjustments that you have to do convenient. You know, you have to do what's con you have to make it convenient. You know, we're not talking about like just flip the switch, guys. Go work out for four hours a day. You know, but do it. Do it, start small. Do it. Do if make it easy for yourself. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I think we get. I think we get stuck with habits. You know. Here's a question, guys. Here's a question. A little bit of a light tone here, but how many times in this, like, if you guys have been sitting in stream, how many times have you alt-tabbed, checked Reddit, Twitter, refreshed in the last 15, 20, 30 minutes? How many times? <laughs> how many times have you pulled up your Reddit or your Discord? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying you need my, I need, you need, I need, uh, you need my full, or, I need your full attention, or I deserve your full attention, but I, I I catch myself doing this way too many times. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. You got to you gotta break it, though. Every little bit, guys, you know? <laughs> oh, guys, I don't know what you all think about this. I, I, I just, I get concerned when I just see people, like, make poor life choices you know and 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 then you know rather than rather than try and better themselves or try and you know and try and work their way back they just kind of like shift the blame and i think it's also it's not only that but it's also disrespectful to people that think that have legitimate mental illness and i think i think without commenting on the medical community as a whole i think man there's been a it's just we, we should pass out medications. I'm starting to sound like Alex Jones now. Oh my days, gotta watch myself. Turn the freaking frogs gay! I <laughs> uh, <laughs> will never not be funny. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with you recently. Listen guys, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, like I have been through times in my life where I've really struggled with this myself. Yeah. Alex Jones is what happens when you go too deep. You get too red pilled. <laughs> you start seeing you start seeing scrolls on the wall that aren't even there. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh man. Just be a decent person, guys. Care for other people. Care for other people. Do the right thing. You know, my solution has always been the bottom right of my screen, but just, yeah. We aren't truly forced to survive. Instead, have time to think and become sad or anxious or something. 
Depression and mental health might have been around 600 years ago, but if you look at it when a human was a farmer, you really think they had time to be depressed and be lazy? That's true. That's true. And I really truly think that our brains are hardwired to respond to, 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 I think, some form of physical work. That's why I think exercise is so important if you're lazy bums like me that have to work on the computer. Because you just don't feel as good as when you've done something physical. I really truly believe that. And I understand in this society that being productive looks at a lot of different ways right now. Some of my hardest days have been sitting at a computer, right? But no, I, I agree. I have a friend, a medicine graduate, who's obsessed with psychology and self-improvement. I can tell you that what you're saying is the same as she's giving. She's showing me new books in psychology that talk about the same issues as you. Yeah, I, I would just love if we had a more holistic approach. Like, I, I feel like medication has to be like a last resort. You know what I'm saying? Because it's invasive and it has a host of potential side effects. And it's necessary in some situations, I'm sure of it. But it just, it can't, I don't feel like it, ha I don't know. Capitalism is a really issue. Oh, well, I, I, don't, I, I, would, I would agree that corporate capitalism is, is definitely the root of a lot of issues, yes. It's so hard. Like, I don't want to get into politics here, but like when, 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 when businesses get so big and then they get their hands in the government's pockets and then we have crony capitalism and, and fascism and bureaucracy and then I, just, I don't know. I don't want to talk politics, guys, but yeah. Uh, I think farmers back then were absolutely depressed and said, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of stress to provide food in the family. I mean, I mean, who knows, guys? We, we, we don't really know the answers to all the issues. We're just sticking leeches on people. True. The simple days. From, got too much influence from non-US people. I, my political opinions have always been maverick. I grew up with a very maverick father, so... I, I don't talk about politics very often, but I have some pretty, I wouldn't say firm political opinions, but. I don't think it's a matter of being lazy, not physical enough. That's true, that's true. I think that's one aspect to it. I think I, I would, I would, here's a question, chat. I feel, I feel like the problem, okay. I feel like relationships has to be the number one thing, right? Maybe even more important than like physical health or nutrition. I don't know what you guys think, but I feel like quality relationships, like in-person relationships probably has to be number one. And then probably number one sleep after that. Yeah, surely. Because another thing about a lot of physical workers that I've done, like typical working man, is n almost none of them get enough sleep. Psychiatrists are doctors with a psychology specialization. Psychologists aren't doctors. They just have a full master's of psychology. Interesting. I have a love-hate relationship with psychology. Let's put it that way. I respect and appreciate all that I've learned from psychology from the many books that I've read and the things that I've studied. But sleep, food, social is how I generally prioritize To me, I, I feel like therapy is just like, therapy is great, but I almost feel like sometimes therapy is like a, is like the relationship that everybody should aspire to have. Does that, am I, am I misspeaking with that? Is there a psych, like, it feels like therapy is like what a really good relationship should provide. Am I crazy? Because sometimes I sit there and, and I'm talking with these people in a voice call and it feels like I'm giving them therapy, but I don't really, I don't really know. But I'm not, I just, I'm just like having a conversation. So like when we talk about like why therapy is necessary, I think it's just that a lot of people don't have the relationships that they want to have or that their relationships aren't able to provide what they need. You know, like for example, if you're a really stressed person, you your significant other might struggle to provide enough support to be able to, you know what I'm saying? For good therapy, you can't be too close to the person you're talking with. That's that's true. That's true. That's a good point. I'm not sure.
Anyway, I'm trying to make sure my son and Patreon entrepreneur is still on. Don't forget, you know, you, I, I'm, you know, Nyla, I'm thinking about a tier seven Patreon where it's $600 and a brand new car every month. Are you interested? Two different avenues, like life advice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Because sometimes I have like very, very, like, for example, I feel like my wife and I have like a really unique relationship where we're really, really, really close. Okay, I'm just going to brag a little bit here, y'all. I got really lucky. I have somebody who I'm really close with, who I have a lot of fun with, and who also will yell at me when I need to be yelled at, and vice versa. But I, for example, my brother is somebody I'm really close with, but sometimes I'm not close enough to kind of get on his case. I have a lot of fun with my brother, but sometimes there's been times where I've felt like I needed to, somebody needs to tell him this, somebody, and, and I'm sure he's had the same thoughts with me, but I didn't feel like I had that relationship with him as much to where I could just sit down and be like, listen, this is what you need to fix. You know what I'm saying? And he would go to, there was an, an adult, another figure in his life who we would talk to, my dad as well, yeah, I, I, I see that. It, it, I think mean, it, it really does feel like there are different types of relationships. Yelling at me is my wife's favorite hobby. That's my favorite. It's my favorite hobby too. Dulas has sent me something. Oh gosh, let's 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 pull this up. A professor gave a balloon to every student to write their name on and throw it in the hallway. The students were given five minutes to find their own balloon. No one found their balloon. The professor told the students to take the first balloon they found and hand out the person whose name was written on it. Within five minutes, everyone had their balloon. The professor said to the students, these balloons are like happiness. We'll never find out if everyone is looking for their own, but if we care about others, people's happiness, we'll find ours too. That's interesting. I, I, I like that. You know, I, I, I will say this, that some of the happiest people I've ever known were people that were completely obsessed with other, making other people happy. I will say that either I I don't know this I hate to be analytical and scientific about stuff guys you know I you know I hate it sometimes it just it, you just have it, it you know it's right yeah I mean think about it even from like well, then you look at Robin Williams well that's the thing is I think we as human beings we have I think we should be we should have. Okay, here, here, here's, here's what happens. Here, here, here's the, the society's great mistake, is if you have somebody who is obsessed with helping others, but nobody ever helps them. Because I don't think anybody can only focus on other people and be happy. But then I actually don't think the solution necessarily is that they should take time for themselves necessarily. That's probably true. But I feel my gut says that it just they need somebody in their life that really cares a lot about them. And maybe Robin Williams, but, but, but regardless of Robin Williams or not, I, I do think that's the case. The, the, the real tragedies are when you have people that really cared a lot about other people, but people didn't care for them. I think, I think that's a real, and whether, whether it, if they were happy or not, I think that's just a crime. Like, Enough of the unimportant stuff. Let's talk video games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is uh, gone on a lot longer than I thought it would. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad we talked, talked about it though. I love talking about this stuff, man. I just want to like. I I I know people think I'm like the rager guy, but bro, I don't. I don't know. Um. I don't even want to know. Has a fat bottom. <laughs> I assume. I assume. We're... Very base discussion. Nice, Rashi. Nice, Rashi. Nice squat form, by the way. You're looking good. Has a fat belly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, these motorcycles are whack. I should leave the window open, but it's so nice outside. Hey, you're welcome. 
I have to compliment you, Virashi, so, you, so uh, you'll let me re-challenge you once I've trained for like six years for our next 1v1. Alright, anyway, anyway, guys, do you guys have any last thoughts? Any last thoughts before I wrap this up? I've gone on for too long. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts. I wouldn't even say questions because I'm, I don't think I'm consider myself qualified enough to answer questions. Yeah, I, Ice Cat, I feel like especially in today's society, that's really hard, <laughs> you know? It is really hard. Why do people even drive motorcycles anymore? I don't know. That's true, Dolos. I, I feel like the small community things, I, I definitely feel the small communities thing. I definitely feel that. I don't know the science behind the way our brains are created, but you know, I, I I will say the friends thing is definitely true. As I've gotten older, a lot of, I've grown apart from a lot of friends, you know. But as long as you have a couple of friends, what did James Stewart say? From from has got a friend, he's rich, you know, with James Stewart. Um, maybe I'm aging, I'm dating myself by just making that reference, but I I, I think that's 100 percent true. Yeah, walkable cities. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I 100%. What? Bigger number, better person. Yeah. We're talking about the scale, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to hear that, Potato Source. Listen, listen. The reason why I'm so obsessed with doing all this is because. I was talking about this with, with Pepper this, this, this morning when I was walking and, and I literally realized that like so much, the reason why I'm so obsessed with coaching is because I end up coaching myself. I really do. When I talk about sleep and stuff like that, I, I, do, I do my absolute best not to be a hypocrite. I really truly, it is, it is a kick in the pants for myself included.